Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my series I'm doing on building this big bandsaw mill. If this is your first time here, there'll be a link up in the cards and down in the description to a playlist that contains all the videos that are bringing you up to date with where we are right now. So this thing is getting really close to being able to be uh, turned on and used for the first time, but there is one last thing I need to do in order to actually cut something, which is to make something that will allow me to hold a log down to the bed so it does not move when it's being cut. So if you recall back to the introduction video of the mill, how it is now is really just like a first version, I guess, or a first iteration. The future or final version of the mill will have all power options. And a lot of that power option is going to be in the log handling. So the stuff I build right now is really just temporary in a sense, because I'm going to replace it with uh, hydraulic options in the future. So the first thing I work on are the side supports, and that's just going to be some posts that come out of the side here to support the log as the blade is coming through it. You can think of these side supports as the table on your bandsaw back in the shop. So these posts need to be able to come up and down, and they all need to be in the same plane, um, both in and out and square to each other. So what I'm going to do for that is I made, well, I made one so far, so I still have to make more of these things. These little blocks here are little posts. So this post will get welded to the inside of the frame, and then the actual side supports will be able to slide down in there and lock in place, and you can set the height with that. Now on the post, I added two bolts to the back, and this will allow me to adjust the in and out position of the post, and also the tilt of the post to get them all square and in the same plane. And then there'll be a locking bolt, which I haven't tapped for yet, but just pushes the post into the corner, and that should set it in position. So I'm gonna have six of these posts total on here, and really, throughout most of the milling operations, I'm all probably going to need to use four of them for like the maximum length of log, but I'm adding one at every intersection where the blade will be able to cut, just for some flexibility. So one of the things people are often surprised by on this mill is how close the cross members are together. And I think a lot of times people assume that that's primarily for strength. And that is a secondary consideration in my mind, but the primary reason I have them spaced so closely, about two feet on center, is for functionality. Having them closer together allows me to mill things that are short. So for instance, I can put a two foot long log on here and be able to mill that without having to like rig up some fancy way to clamp things. It's built right in. The other thing too is that since they're closer together on those longer lengths, it's more likely that I'll be able to set the logs onto the cross members without with the end of it flopping out in the breeze. <laughs> I've seen that on some mills where if you have a log that's just the right length, just the kind of goofy length, where it's sitting on the cross members, but it's extending to like a point where it's like, uh, I don't know, 18 inches or even more on some that have further spacing, like two feet off the end of it. And you start cutting that as you get down to the last boards, that thing is just flopping around on there because it's not being supported through that cut. So having them closer together will help me prevent that from happening.
So I wanted to test this concept out before I went ahead and made all three other clamps. And I think this is gonna work out just fine for the time being until I upgrade to something a little more substantial. This is just a bunch of gas pipe from the home center and it seems to work out pretty well. As the clamp head is pushed outwards, it causes the T-fitting to tip and the threads on the fitting actually grab the pipe and really hold it in place. Uh, the only real issue at this point is that the pipe down here is three quarter inch, which has a bit of flex on it, especially at this span. But I think once I have enough, more like more than one clamp on the log, it's not gonna be too big of an issue. These really just keep the log from rolling into the cut. So especially if I have a shorter piece of pipe on here so that it's more vertical as opposed to tilt, tipped over like this, I think that's gonna be just fine for my purposes here. The nice thing about this fitting system here is if I wanna make this shorter or longer, for instance, I can just swap out the center section of pipe for a different length pretty easily. So it is freezing today. <laughs> it's actually been really cold the last few days. Uh, it is currently 15 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you don't know what that is, that is negative 10 degrees Celsius. So uh, it's getting into winter now and pretty cold. So let me show you how to make uh, or how I made this one by making another three. So to save some money and have a little more flexibility, I'm gonna make my own flanges for the three quarter inch pipe. I'm gonna do that by cutting a short nipple in half and then I'll have two short sections that can weld to a mounting plate. And then to couple the nipple to the actual pipe that's gonna span the width of the bed, I'll just add a coupler to it and there we go, a nice homemade mounting flange. So the coupler is just can thread on to the end of a piece of pipe. That's the right length so that it'll span the width of the bed. And I just went down to the home center and had some uh, gas pipe cut to length and threaded for me. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> and pro tip, if you want to save some money, just buy the full 10 foot lengths instead of buying the length you need. It's about uh, it's less than half the cost to buy twice as much pipe. Then I can thread the couplers on until the whole assembly fits down in between the bed frame. And if you're stupid like me, You'll forget the teeth in it. So the clamping mechanism is going to be essentially just a screw and to make that I'm just going to use a section of threaded rod. I could use a bolt for instance but it's a little bit harder to find uh, longer fully threaded bolts. 
So I'm just using some threaded rods since I can make these whatever length I want. I can make longer ones in the future if I need to or shorter ones or whatever. I'll sharpen one end of the rod on the grinder just to get it a little more pointy, just so it digs into the log a little better. And then the threaded rod will get fed through a coupler nut, which will get welded to a mounting plate, which will attach it to the clamping mechanism on the mill. And on the other end, I'll weld a nut on here so I can turn this thing with my chainsaw tool for now, and I'll have somewhere to attach a handle in the future. So to make the mount for the actual clamping mechanism, I'm going to be doing pretty much the same thing as I did to make the mounts for the cross members that are on the mill already. Uh, I just cut a nipple in half, so a nipple like this, I cut it in two, so I ended up with you know, one of these things, and then another one I have in here. That gets attached to a coupler, and this coupler will go onto a piece of pipe that extends off that T-fitting on the mill. And then to make a mounting plate that's going to hold both of the screw mechanism and on the other side, uh, the actual attachment mechanism, I'm just using whatever I can find laying around. This is a piece of, I think, quarter inch steel. So I'll just weld the uh, coupler fitting thing onto here and then I'll weld the, um, the, the screw thing to the other side. So these log clamps actually work really well. The whole thing, of course, can be operated with the, the screw using, a, in my case, a chainsaw tool to just tighten the screw down. And that'll cause the, uh, the T-fitting to tip on that piece of pipe and jam in place. Now, you can also set these things a lot quicker with a hammer. So if I undo this a little bit, grab the hammer, you can just Put the clamp wherever you want, it's probably like halfway up the log, and then well, I put it in the hole already. And you can tap it into the log to create a little bit of a, a divot in there. Just to set the screw to the bark, and then to tighten the clamp, all you do is just hammer down here to slide the teeth fitting along the pipe. So that's totally clamped in place. Now on clamping it, uh, you probably need some other way of hitting this thing out, which is fine. Um, you can try and get the hammer around there, but you can put like a piece of pipe on the other side to tap it out or whatever. But of course, you can always just loosen it using the screw, which isn't that hard either. So either way, it does definitely grab ridiculously well for what it is. <laughs> Some gas pipe. So the actual side supports are nothing fancy. I just made this really quickly out of some two by two uh, square tube. I angled the top here and capped it, and that's gonna prevent any uh, log as you're rolling it against here from catching on anything. Uh, it just makes things a little bit more smooth to operate. And these just sit down right in here, and you can adjust them to any height. Uh, this one here has about eight inches of range on it. Um, that'll take it up to about uh, 14 inches off the bed. So these just have to go up to about the center point of the log. So this will be able to mill anything up to maybe about 30 inches in diameter, which is most of the stuff I'm gonna do. And these can just get locked down at whatever height you need. Now, once you have your log square up to a canch, you don't need a big side support because you're gonna be making slices coming down, coming down, coming down to the bed. And when you get to that point, you just need a little thing to stick up from the uh, the pocket here 
just enough to hold that log or hold that cant from sliding across the bed. And for that, I have the offcuts from making those um, side supports. It's at least about eight to uh, maybe about 10 inches long or so. And on one of them so far, I added this um, uh, grabber head thing, which is just a scrap piece of steel that I cut some teeth into. And eventually I'll put a little stop on here. So this just sits maybe a uh, half inch above the bed. And this will bite into the cant. And as you're making cuts down the board, this will hold this thing down to the bed so that as tension is released in the log, it doesn't lift and bow and that you end up with like thinner board on the bottom because this whole uh, log had bowed over the top of the bed. So that's what the teeth are for. But otherwise, this is a very versatile system because you can make whatever size side supports you need or custom stuff like this or whatever else, I guess. <laughs> so I think the system is gonna work out really well. I like that it is pretty simple to make. It was quick. Uh, relatively inexpensive comparatively to everything else so far and I think the first um, hydraulic log handling thing I'm going to do is going to be the log clamp. Uh, these are, at least they seem like they're going to work out alright but we'll see how well they hold for sure. Um, it's just I think adjusting it all the time is going to be kind of annoying but that's alright. As long as it's functional at this point I am totally happy. <laughs> and as you can see now I'm switching into more of a rapid prototyping type of thing because the weather, um, well, you can see the weather is getting kind of uh, not fun for being outside. <laughs> so I went ahead and I skipped adding handles to all these things. Everything is operated with just the chainsaw tool. Um, it's not that hard to just have this on me like I normally do with my chainsaws anyway. And I can adjust everything on the log holding system with just this one tool. So that's not too big of a deal. In the spring, I'll add handles to everything just to make it a little more convenient. But for now, hey, it works, right? <laughs> So getting really close to having this thing operational, as you can see, the blade guides are in progress here, almost done with those, and that'll be the next video. So look for that in the near future. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the log clamping system, on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.